السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we thank him upon all conditions, we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all without exception, and to bless every one of you, and to bless those who could not make it inside, I believe there were so many people who had to go back. My heart is with them more than it is with you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, it is with those who are perhaps listening online, who had no option but to do that. And then it's with you as well, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I also really would like to let you know at the very outset that I'm just a human being. And I'm a brother of yours, my beloved sisters, my beloved brothers. I'm just a brother of yours. And I'm here only to remind you about your link with Allah and your link with the rest of the creation that Allah has created. That's it. And uh, at the same time, if we go home today, having changed ourselves even a little bit, we have achieved. If we go home and we haven't changed, then what was the point of coming? What was the purpose? I cannot take you to heaven because I don't own it, but Allah can take you to heaven because He owns it. I don't even know if I'm praying there or not, but I ask you to pray for me and we pray for each other. That's what it's all about. You remind me and I remind you by the will of Allah. I sometimes feel very, very nervous when it comes to people making a big deal about seeing what I look like. You know what I look like. <laughs> you probably would see me clearer on the screen than you would in person. And that's a fact. And it, it makes me nervous because I always say, Oh Allah, forgive me. I'm just a sinful human being. And people make such a big deal sometimes that it creates an embarrassment for me. And wallahi, had it not been for the love that Allah has instilled in our hearts, I probably wouldn't even have come today. But at the same time, I believe, as you see, this masjid needs a lot of renovation. It is a place of worship that used to be a synagogue before. Perhaps you might have noticed that. And then the Muslimin, mashallah, purchased it. And there was a time when they were about to sell it. And this is when some of the brothers got involved, and alhamdulillah, I was approached to perhaps attend an event of this nature as a guest. And I was quite reluctant initially, but when I saw it's a good cause, I said to myself, you know what, I don't mind being a guest. And guess what? Every one of you are guests at the same function. So don't just say I was a guest, we were all guests. We were together, colleagues. And we, if we had the time, we would have heard from every single one of you, and perhaps we, I still may hear from a lot of you, perhaps online, one way or another. Not to say that I see all the messages, but I do make dua for everyone who does message, and even those who don't, may Allah bless us all and grant us goodness. Sometimes I don't get a chance to respond, but I do make a dua for Allah, those whose emails I haven't seen, those whose messages I haven't even seen, may you bless them, may you create ease in whatever they, difficulty they may be going through as well, and so on. So I think I am asking you to do the same for me. We all go through issues as human beings, we all go through a lot of challenges uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the owner of the solutions to those challenges. May Allah bless us all, myself included, Ami. Now let's get cracking, basically. <laughs> we need, my brothers and sisters, to develop two things. Two things. The link with the one who made us and the link with the rest of the creatures that the same maker made. I hope you get me. So, one of the two is not good enough without the other. Remember this. Ask yourself today, what is my link with he who made me? And what is my link with those others whom he has made as well? Because they are all the creatures of Allah. There is no point in me developing my link with Allah, but my link with the rest of the creatures of the same Allah happens to be bad. It happens to be poor. I can imagine what has happened here today. I can imagine. The reason is I've attended events where there are thousands of people and sometimes there's not enough place. This is the house of Allah. It was wrong for anyone to have stopped anyone from entering it. But if it is full to capacity, for security reasons perhaps, it would not be wrong to say, my brothers, you can't make it in. My sisters, you cannot make it in. Sometimes you have sisters tiptoeing on the side just to take a peek. What does this guy look like? Trust me, my sisters. That's an embarrassment to a man like me. But at the same time, you know, you know because 
like I said, you have seen online or YouTube or television or whatever else it is. That's the world today. But at the same time, I want to let you know, I can imagine that there were people maltreated outside by some of the volunteers. Not because the volunteers are bad, not because the people are bad, but because the situation is such that you start raising your voice because people tend to become a little bit selfish sometimes. I want to make it in, but there's no place. What do you mean there's no place? I came from Norway. I know there are brothers who come here all the way from Norway and other countries of Europe. I hope you made it in because people have sent me emails telling me we're flying from this place and that place. I didn't respond, I just made it laugh. Why? I didn't even know if I was going to be here. SubhanAllah. If you notice, I didn't say one word. Did you notice that? I kept quiet because if I didn't make it, what would have happened? People would have been on in my throat. Basically, I would have had to clear my throat more than I do. But my brothers and sisters, Forgive those who may not have treated you the way you should have been treated as a fellow creature made by the same maker. That's what I'm talking about. Forgive the organizers. Perhaps you might be feeling in your heart if they should have organized it this way or that way. This is the house of Allah. Forgive the people who may have faltered here and there. This is how we will become better human beings. Also, as you're leaving, perhaps there might be a word or two that might be nasty, that may be said from one person to another, my shoes are gone. And so I've had my shoes take a walk so many times, I don't mind them being stolen, but I mind if someone took them away for baraka purposes. Because I need that baraka more than they do, to be honest with you. And if they took it away, they would achieve nothing but all the burdens that I had. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So I've had my shoes taken away many times, but I've walked barefoot and tried to get another pair of perhaps uh, shoes as soon as I could. So please don't be upset, don't be angry, and at the same time be calm. The way we are seated right now, I can comfortably say, if you want to know what sardines feel like in that tin, well, mashallah, tabarakallah. Today, we can comfortably and easily say we pack like sardines. I don't really like sardines, but the way they pack impresses me because they leave no room for shaitan. <laughs> It's the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he speaks about sitting together and standing in salah. He says, don't leave a gap for the devil, for shaitan. So we can learn from that by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'd like you to lend your support to the masjid. And when I say the masjid, it's part of the topic today because that is your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of us, we have been created by a maker. That maker loves us. No matter what you've done in your life, your maker loves you. He's waiting for you to turn to him. He's waiting for you to quit that bad habit you know you have. He's waiting for you to quit the bad habits sometimes that you know you have. And you know what they are. It could be adultery, it could be pornography, it could be drugs, it could be alcohol, it could be gambling, it could be so many other sins that are committed by the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, you are in the house of Allah or you are listening to something happening in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a blessed house of Allah. It's a place of worship, subhanAllah. The hearts will be softened. Please, for the sake of Allah, turn to Him. Seek His forgiveness. Quit your drugs. Your family will be such a happy place. Quit your bad habits, the intoxicating habits and so on. Your family and your friends and those you interact with will be happier people. Your environment will be so blessed. You will become a person who is content. Quit the watching of pornography. Quit all the other bad habits. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, that is Allah calling you to quit. The hadith speaks of how happy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes when the slave of his turns to him even a little inch. I'm sure you've heard the hadith Qudsi where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if someone comes to me a hand span, I come to him a foot. And if someone comes to me, the hadith continues to say, walking, I come to him rushing. Which means Allah will come to you quicker than you come to Allah. But the condition is you need to make an effort to at least come to Allah, even if it means one inch. If I'm heading in the wrong direction, how do I expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to me? I need to calm myself down, think about who I am, where I am, where I am heading, what I want to achieve. A lot of us, if we were to ask the youth, what would you like to achieve? They would, they would think immediately of life. Well, I want to get a job, I want to try and pay off my debt. Alhamdulillah, at least they didn't steal the money. 
I would like to uh, perhaps get married, mashallah, may Allah make it easy for those who are married to get married. <laughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for those who are not married to get married. Oh, mashallah. Okay, so everyone's okay. By the will of Allah. I thought you were not listening, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. My brothers and sisters, the point I'm raising is, we, if we have the plan for what to do on earth, what if Allah has chosen for us not to live another day? What if Allah has chosen for us not to live for longer than a few days, or a week, or a month, or a year, and our plans happen to go exactly 40 years from now? People actually say, when I retire, I'm going to live in Zimbabwe. Have you heard that? MashaAllah. When I retire at the age of 65, I'm going to shift to a lovely corner in Africa. There are no corners in Africa, my brothers and sisters. No corners at all. Africa is a continent of excitement. Do you know why? MashaAllah, we have days and nights sometimes with no electricity. We have weeks and months with no water. We have no, sometimes the roads happen to have potholes. We now call them craters. SubhanAllah. So we still thank Allah, we live with a smile, we are happy. We are not connected on the internet all the time, do you know that? That's Africa, that's part of Africa. But we love the place, I wouldn't trade it for anywhere else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. It goes to show, if you are content with what Allah has provided, you don't actually need material items in this world. But if you are after the material world, you won't be content and you will never stop running behind it and you won't achieve the main goal. What's the main goal? My brothers and sisters, if your answer is anything besides Jannah or Paradise, it's the wrong answer. Your main goal should be Paradise. So yes, I, my plan must not be only for 40 years. It must be for eternity. A mu'min's plan should be going into eternity. That means my plan right now will be, inshallah, if I live, I'd like to have a decent job so I can have a family, so I can have an you know, the uh, children, if Allah wills, and increase the ummah and try and teach them and try and keep them steadfast on the deen as best as I can and so on and so forth. But I will prepare for the akhirah by fulfilling my daily prayers, by dressing appropriately no matter what the dunya says, no matter what people say. I will dress in the proper way. And at the same time, I will make sure that I do good no matter what people think of me. I will reach out to all those struggling and suffering in whatever good way that I can reach out. But at the same time, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. Habibi, my brothers and sisters outside, I feel like starting again. I have a recording of this lecture. There again, I find it difficult to forgive the organizers for this big blunder. Brother, I'll think about forgiving you guys. How can you have people outside who cannot hear and you let me start? And I started and I spoke for so long. 13 minutes and 6 seconds, that's going to require 1,306 people forgiving. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Anyway, my brothers and sisters, I will make it my business to put this online audio version from my phone 15 minutes after we leave here, if Allah wills and if it works, and if I still have data on my phone by the way <laughs> So, inshallah, you forgive me, I've said a lot, and I'm starting to sweat because I feel so embarrassed that I spoke and the people outside couldn't hear. Really, I feel like giving up, closing, and telling you guys I'm so sorry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. Anyway, you guys heard what I said, didn't you, in the masjid? Did you hear? So please tell those outside what I said. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, let me quickly make mention of a few points that I may have already said, but let's try and word it a little bit differently. So my brothers and sisters, if you have thought about your life in this world without thinking about the life of the hereafter, then you have slipped up. As a mu'min, you have faltered and perhaps you have lost. We need to consider the hereafter. And the hereafter is so, so amazing because when we came into this world, we came with nothing. We were naked. When we leave this world, we will leave with nothing. We will be naked. But the honor of the Banu Adam, the honor of humankind, we are taught to enshroud the person in simple white clothing for that honor. Adam. Allah says, indeed, we have honored the children of Adam. Indeed, we have honored mankind at large. So part of that honor is, you know, when you die, you are covered. Imagine if you were to lay, be laid down naked, and people wouldn't even want to be laid down. May Allah forgive us. I know my mind doesn't want to even go there. 
But at the same time, when you came, you came with nothing. When you left, you leave with nothing. Everything that happened here stays here. Everything that happened on earth stays here. Besides one thing. Do you know what that is? It's known as deeds. Al-A'mal. That's what comes with you. Your deeds. So how many deeds you have accumulated, that's your bank balance. Today, mashallah, you know, you have a bank balance in this bank and that bank and people are making a lot of money and accumulating it and sometimes investing it in different ways in order to try and uh, perhaps carry the value of what they have. Because I come from Africa. In Africa, if you don't invest your money very quickly in something, it loses value. So before you know it, it's gone and it was in your hands. The figure is the same, but the value has diminished. I'm sure you've heard of Zimbabwe, we no longer have a currency. The reason is, it went from 1 to 10, from 10 to 100, from 100 to 1,000, to a million, to a billion, to a trillion, to a quadrillion, to a pentillion, a septillion, and whatever else, until it got to a nonillion and a decillion. Do you know what that is? You don't, because you use pounds. <laughs> so, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what you need to do is accumulate your deeds for the hereafter. Read your salah. Every salah you read, be happy that this is going to my bank balance for the hereafter. Because Allah says, Allah in nasil'ata Allahi ghaliya. Indeed, the commodity that Allah has, is selling is very expensive. What is that commodity? It is Jannah. Yes, Allah may give it to you through His mercy and it is His mercy that will give it to us ultimately. But, my brothers and sisters, you need to know something extremely important and that is, if you were trying, that's when Allah will bless you. If you haven't even been trying and you haven't done anything at all in the direction of paradise, what do you expect? Like I said earlier, the hadith, if you get to Allah, if you try to come closer to Allah, a hand span, He comes closer to you a whole foot. But that hadith did not say, when you are turning away from Allah, He will come running behind you. Allahu Akbar. I hope you get what I'm saying. You have to try, you have to do something. People came here, you made an effort. The people here in the front must have come here some hours before the people at the back perhaps. Subhanallah, unless you're the lucky ones like me, walking from a trap door at the back. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, it's a reality. We are concerned about coming to the first self, about this, about that. What about being in the first self in the Akhirah? If that's the case, you need to do good. You need to reach out to mankind, but at the same time, the creator of mankind. And thereafter, the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love the hadith of the dog and the hadith of the cat. Do you know what those hadith are? I'm sure you may have heard them. A person entered Jannah. The Prophet peace be upon him said, a lady was granted Jannah because she was compassionate towards a cat. Do you know that? And a man was forgiven all his sins because he was compassionate towards a dog. I want to ask you a question. If being compassionate towards a cat got someone into Jannah, what do you think being compassionate towards another human being will get you? Question. I'm not talking of Muslims, I'm talking of non-Muslims. If you are compassionate towards a dog and that man achieved total forgiveness, what do you think you will achieve by being compassionate to another human? Because you and I know that human beings are better than cats and dogs. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of karama, in terms of the honor given to them by Allah. One might say, no, these are sinful people. Well, weren't we all somewhere in that boat sometime before, either in our own lives or that of our forefathers? My brothers and sisters, if we had to look at everyone who sins or everyone who's a non-Muslim as a write-off, that person doesn't deserve to exist. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we would have not existed if the same attitude happened to be in the people who were slightly before. We wouldn't have existed. Why? Nobody would have worked on us. How many of us are here because someone has spoken to us, someone has motivated us, someone has helped us through life, looking at it from a different angle. Someone has helped us develop a link with Allah. That's why we are seated here today. If no one had hope in you or in me, where would we have been today? We would have perhaps had according to us, better things to do on a Saturday afternoon, right? People would have had better things to do, say, I've got better things to do. What's the meaning of better? Depending on how you're leading your life, so you will translate the word better. According to some, better is a nightclub, stop with Allah. According to some, better is committing adultery somewhere. According to some, better is drinking or watching a pornography somewhere. But according to those whose life is indeed heading in the right direction, 
there can be nothing better than spending a few hours in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will test you. He will test you with what? I'm hot, I'm sweaty, I'm squashy. People spoke to me abusively as, they, as we came in. I'm not condoning it, I'm just saying it's our test. And then I would sit here for a while and you know what, this guy, he was so arrogant. He walked in from a trap door in the front and straight after the talk he walked out from the trap door in the front and he disappeared and we drove 200 miles just to come and see him. I would have told you, please don't do that, just turn on your live streaming, you'll still see me. Allahu Akbar. But the point I'm raising is, we are trying our best to encourage one another, to help one another by me spreading a good message. I am earning a reward. If you were to follow, if one of you were to follow even a single millimeter, may Allah make me from among those who follows or who practices what I preach. I try my best, alhamdulillah, if I'm faltering, please can you guide me. But at the same time, if any one of us moves even by a little inch in the right direction, guess what? We're all getting a reward because together we make this happen. We made this afternoon happen, this evening. How did it happen? Without you, it wouldn't have been here. Without the volunteers, it wouldn't have happened. Without, mashallah, this beautiful masjid, as hot as it might be in here. But trust me, when you come back again here to this masjid, one of the afternoons for salah, or when you come back quietly to give your 10,000 pounds without anyone knowing, then you'll notice there'll be less people. Mashallah. Mashallah. Okay, not 10,000. Let's be realistic. You're 10 pounds. Alhamdulillah. It's good enough. Mashallah. So, my brothers and sisters, ask yourself, what's your link with Allah, your maker? And what's your link with the rest of the creation? Like I said, if being compassionate towards an animal brought about paradise, what do you think being compassionate to a fellow human being will bring about? And then, what do you think being compassionate towards a Muslim will bring about? That's now another level. And what do you think being compassionate to a family member, your spouse, your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, your in-laws, they are related to you whether you like it or not. SubhanAllah, they are related to you. Stop saying no. Allah Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Being kind to them, compassionate. Yes, Allah created babies in order to test you. And Allah created old people in order to test you too. He says it in the Quran. Allahu alladhi khalaqakum min da'fin thumma ja'ala min ba'ti da'fin quwa thumma ja'ala min ba'ti quwatin da'fan wa shaybah the three different stages of creation all people go through. Allah has created you initially in a state of weakness. You know, a child is helpless. A child for survival depends on the parents or on someone to look after it. The child needs to be fed, it needs to be clothed, it needs someone to help it relieve itself. Do you agree? SubhanAllah. And even if pampers helped it, but it needs someone to change those. Agree? Now what happens is after that Allah says you become strong. And after you become strong, you peak at the age of 40 and then you start going downhill, whether you like it or not. SubhanAllah, when I turned 40, I looked in the mirror and I said, mm, don't lie. <laughs> you are now going downhill. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a reality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah bless us all. So, Going downhill, and then Allah says, There is da'fan wa shaybatan. There is weakness and gray hair. Weakness and gray hair. Do you know it's more difficult to look after an older person than it is to look after a baby? Why? <laughs> they are expected to have a brain. They can speak, they can tell you. And guess what? You will do good to them. You will look after them. You will carry them. You will help them. You will feed them. You might help them relieve themselves. And they still may not give you words of appreciation. They'll complain about the smallest thing sometimes. They will. You cook for them, by the way. And they'll still tell you the salt is less. Or this, instead of saying, please pass me the salt. Lovely food, mashallah. I just like it with a bit more salt sometimes. There are ways of speaking, my brothers and sisters. If you are compassionate, and this is why I want to tell those who are older, who may listen to this now or later, please make life easy for those you live with. Please, that is how you will get your paradise. What's the point of having lived a beautiful life and when you're old, everyone's waiting for you to die? You know, on your face they say, MashaAllah, may Allah give you a long life. And later on they say, Allah forgive us. 
You don't want them to be hypocritical. When they say, may Allah give you a long life, they should be meaning it. Why? You know, you, you are bothered about your link with Allah and you're a stress-free person. So stop stressing the people around you. But the point I'm raising is when you are compassionate to those who live with you, and when you make life easy for them, life becomes worth living. And at the same time, we look forward to Allah who blesses us in so many other ways because we have made other people's lives easy. Allah will continue to assist the worshipper for as long as the worshipper continues to assist his or her brethren, meaning fellow worshippers and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Similarly, Another narration, the Prophet وسلم, says, nasi nasi. The best of people are those who benefit the rest of the people the most. The best of people are those who benefit the rest of the people the most. Take this home with you today. Ask yourself, how much do I benefit the rest of the people? That's a question. You walk, you catch public transport or whatever it is. You might go to work, you work with so many people, you interact with so many people. How have you benefited them? How have you touched their lives? This is the link with the rest of the creation of Allah. You might see people who think totally different from you, but if you touch their lives in a beautiful way, they would start considering, number one, that you are definitely a reasonable person. You and I know the Islamophobia out on the globe. You and I know that the media is having fun with the Muslimin at the moment, because we are sometimes making a fool of ourselves. But at the same time, what difference are you making? You can. If all of us decide that we're going to be good and kind, Wallahi, we can make a very big difference. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. My brothers and sisters, this is the link with the rest of mankind. The rest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Develop it and you will realize that Allah's blessings will come in your direction. Subhanallah. Look, this is the house of Allah. Do you know wudu is the ablution? That's a, use, that's a term that's used by the Muslimin. It's the washing of certain parts of the body before you can actually pray the five daily prayers, right? If you were to think very carefully, when you come in the house of Allah, imagine if we were unclean. Imagine if we were allowed to walk here without having washed ourselves, for example. People would complain, this man is smelling, this woman is smelling, or this person, there's a foul smell coming from this one, that one. Allah says, hang on, when you have eaten something that is strong in smell, such as onion or garlic, Rinse your mouth thoroughly before you enter the masjid. Do you know why? You shouldn't be harming people who come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a foul smell. You shouldn't be harming them with your foul smell. Not at all. So imagine, that's the concern Islam has laid down for the rest of the humankind. Don't harm them with the smell. Something that's smelly from your mouth. So imagine if the words were bad. It's worse than garlic and onion. Wallahi. I prefer a man, garlic and onion, and he's smiling at me because I'm not really going to smell that. And someone who's talking to me with a beautiful perfume on, but he's swearing me, he's abusive, and so on. We would all prefer the former and not the latter. Do you agree? Subhanallah, who would want someone to insult them, to swear them, and yet they're not smelling of garlic? And another person, you're, a, a person who respects you all the time, one day there's a little bit of a foul smell from their mouth, I'm sure you would excuse them. If, if I were you, I'd hand them a few of those, you know, chewing gums, and say, well, would you like some? MashaAllah. The only thing is, I hope they don't chew while they're in salah. So my brothers and sisters, this is the beauty of the faith. In the masjid, the house of Allah, you will come in, you will help the others feel comfortable. You know when you come in the house of Allah, how it should be? It should be that you enter it and you are so comfortable, you don't feel like leaving. And because you have things to do, that's why you have to leave. With us, we only come to the masjid because we have to come to the masjid. That's it. What's your link with the masjid? Ask yourself. What's your link with the house of Allah? Whatever it is, in your locality, your area, what's your link with it? Many people will say, yeah, I go there for Jumu'ah. Jumu'ah? That's not the only link you should be having with the house of Allah. I want to tell you something, an important narration. The Prophet ﷺ says, Man bana lillahi masjidan, bana Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah. Whoever builds for the sake of Allah, a masjid, a place of worship, meaning a masjid, you know what it is, Allah will build for him or her. A place in Jannah, a house in Jannah. Now, have you asked yourself why is this so important? 
Sometimes we're not wealthy. Like I said, whoever's going to come up with 10,000 pounds towards this masjid, subhanAllah, I'm sure going to do it quietly later on. But, may Allah bless you with the palace in Jannah. None of us, maybe, would actually be able to have the entire amount to purchase a whole building of this nature. A million, two million, I don't even know what it might cost. Perhaps more. But the beauty is even your one pound, your 50p, that you might have put into a box, or you might have helped in this right direction. You know what? You will have the reward of having contributed towards the house of Allah as a result. The ulama say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just going to throw you a little brick and say, okay, this was the one brick you contributed, you can keep it, and that's it. He will build for you a whole house in Jannah because he knew that that was the best you could do, or at least it was something you could do. You know, this is why it's good to contribute towards a lot of the masajid, you see. The running costs, then electricity bills, water bills, here they have heater bills and so on. Uh, uh, whatever other bills you may be having with us, we have generators because I told you about the electricity. We have our own water, borehole, because I told you about the water. We have 10,000 litre tanks because I told you about the water and so on. But there is a cost. There are people who work, there are salaries, there are so many things. Have you ever thought about contributing towards the masjid? I have told some of the young men that if you were charged one pound for every salah, I think we'd be bankrupt. One pound, meaning five pounds a day. You pay one pound to use the facility. You know what? What you are using is more than one pound. You are sitting here today. I made it a condition to the brothers to say no charge. You know, we're tired of charging people for Islamic lectures. But at the same time, they have to cover costs. So they said, no problem, but do you mind if we do a little fundraiser? I said, no, inshallah, there's no harm. Let them volunteer, let them give. So if every one of us has given 10 pounds, yes, mashallah. You would be able, inshallah, the next time you come here to have air condition. I hope it's the other way, here. Yeah. Air condition, mashallah. And we'll have a beautiful facility here, mashallah. We would be able to make use of the facility much more. But at the same time, my brothers and sisters, if we contribute towards the house of Allah, even in a small way, Allah will build for us a palace in Jannah. Allah will give us that palace in Jannah. So let's take something out. Let's try and assist in a good cause. I was saying, if you were charged for the facility that you used for your prayer, when you come in, you can't really put a price at that. Even if it was 50p, people would feel it a lot. £2.50 a day. SubhanAllah. But you know what? The masajid don't really charge you. They don't, and they wouldn't. But at the same time, my brothers and sisters, shouldn't we be giving something, even if it means 10 pounds a month, I'm going to set it aside for a masjid that I read in, I frequent and so on. I think it's beautiful. Can we not make that intention, inshallah, 10 pounds a month towards the masjid that we are connected to somehow, by the will of Allah. Is it okay? Can we do that? Inshallah. I help you, inshallah, by the will of Allah. By the way, inshallah can mean yes and it can mean no. You know that? <laughs> when, you, when someone says, are you coming? Inshallah, that means no. <laughs> and if someone says, you're coming, yeah, Inshallah, I'll be there. Then yes, we heard the yes and the Inshallah. So, so we want to hear the yes, Inshallah. So will we do that? Yes. What was it you were talking about? That's what you're going to say. Well, we were talking about 10 pounds. We were talking about 10 pounds. Brothers and sisters, people want to become famous. You know what that means? We live, streaming across the globe. There are people in Singapore listening right now. Do you know that? But they want to hear a number plate, wow. <laughs> Someone needs to move their car, LS05VXN, wow. LS05, that's quite a new car by the way. It's only about 10 years old. <laughs> so, VXN, subhanAllah, your car is going to be towed away. Please can you go out? And if you stand up in the center of everyone, you'll make a special to ask me. <laughs> so this vehicle, LS05VXN, Please can you get up and move your vehicle because by the will of Allah, may Allah grant you barakah in your car and may He make you from among those who can afford an even better car by the will of Allah. And may you be granted sustenance from a place you didn't imagine. I can't believe you're still not standing up. <laughs> this dua was on condition that you got up to move your car. If you didn't, I don't want to say it. We'd rather just keep quiet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. But these are the people who want to become famous. Please, my brothers and sisters, the next time you attend a talk, 
do not intentionally park your car in such a way, thinking you're going to get a dua. Because that time you don't know what's going to come. It's hindering people, it's hindering Wallahi. I remember once I was leading Taraweeh somewhere, and there was an announcement made where someone had a heart attack. And they, they had to go to the hospital, and they were trying to get out of the venue, and the people who were right at the end were blocking the whole way. And these people were trying to get across, and people were saying, why didn't you do this, and why didn't you do that, but nobody's going to offer their cars. People are leaving Salat al Taraweeh. So it's better. Allah may give you Jannah if you are considerate towards people who use the road. Do you know that? Do you know the hadith says part of your iman is imaqatul adha anil tariq. Part of your iman is to move a harmful object from the path of people. So at this time, your car is a harmful object. You need to move it because people need to use that path. You came to listen to a good talk. You came to read salah, to pray and so on. How can you block people's paths? How can you do that? SubhanAllah, someone's cursing you. You say, oh Allah, have mercy on me. And it's deleted by someone else's dua. Oh Allah, destroy this guy. You know, with Muslims, we get very hard when it comes to dua. You notice that? Someone stamps on your feet. May Allah break your feet. How? <laughs> That's the problem with the Ummah today. We have a small difference of opinion. May Allah destroy these people, all of them, them and their children and their parents. How? May Allah forgive us. Become compassionate. You show compassion towards the creatures of Allah. Allah created them just like He created you. And who knows, they might win the race to paradise if they accepted the deen and if they, after you were gone, they might have made sujood to, to Allah as the last act of worship before they went. And who would have won? This is why, have hope in people. Have hope in Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide everyone, including ourselves. May Allah keep us steadfast until the end. So my brothers and sisters, this is what we're talking about. The link with the rest of humanity. This doesn't do us any good, my brothers and sisters, besides getting a good dua if you have the guts to stand up and walk out. I still didn't see the person, but I'd like to hope they're already at the car somehow, somehow. But my brothers and sisters, now let's talk about this link with Allah. How many of us, I don't want you to show hands, I want you to answer in your heart that I don't need to know. You are not answerable to me, I will not judge you, but I will help you, I will guide you, I will advise you, and the advice is for myself as well. How many of us do not read five salah a day? You know. And you want to have a link with Allah. He's the owner of the solutions of your problem. But you're not reading five salah a day. People read four, people read three. MashaAllah, you might be doing good or better than you were. But I tell you what, it doesn't take long. Allah gave you 24 hours in the day. And it won't take you 24 minutes to read those five salah in total, all together. If you were to do the farm. But how many of us don't? How many of us, we complain that, you know what? Uh, Salatul Fajr is too late or too early, or Salatul Isha is too late or too early. That's Allah. You can get up. You would get up for your girlfriend, wouldn't you? Or your boyfriend. It's a reality. You know that. Even if you're married, people would do so for those they're not married with. SubhanAllah. And it's happening. I'm a marriage counselor and I can tell you the biggest problem we have today is the mobile phone. Why? People don't know how to use it. I invite you, all of you, to take another thing home today. And I challenge you, and this is a challenge that's going to stay, to put your mobile phone away when you are with your wife or husband or children every day for at least one full hour. Turn it off. How's that? Okay, if you're saying no, I can offer you something else. And nobody said, okay, yes. I didn't even hear one letter. That's how addicted we are. When you get to bed, Put your phone on charge in another room. Ready to do that? See, we're hearing a few people say that there's all the oldies who don't even know what the iPhone is all about. <laughs> SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. It's a serious problem. Do you know if your marriage is suffering turbulence, you can resolve it sometimes by just giving up your phone for part of the day, every single day. Do you know that? Talk to people. Imagine I'm talking to you today. Imagine how irritating it would be if I stopped everyone and I answered a call. I did it in one of my talks. We had a Dubai Peace Convention. I don't know if any one of you have seen it online. Yeah. And I arranged with one of the organizers to ring my phone while I was busy. The topic was about social media or something. 
and my phone rang and there were thousands of people, tens of thousands of people there in the arena. And you know what? I told them, hang on, I have a phone call. <laughs> and wallahi, I answered the phone and I took it and I started speaking to someone and the whole world is watching. And people were started looking at each other and they started thinking, this guy is crazy, he's mad. Look at this. this is the peak of it, this is the height of it, man. <laughs> and then I told this, whoever it was on the other side, it was one of the organizers, said, brother, I am so busy, I've got 35,000 people I'm speaking to right now. I'm really busy, don't feel bad, but I need to go, I need to go. You know the GTGs that we send on WhatsApp, we send them 20 times, go, man! <laughs> oh, my God. Allahu Akbar, stop saying I got to go, got to go. When you send it to me 20 times, just move, man. Allahu Akbar. So when I put the phone down and I made it, I clear to everyone that this was actually a plan, they were shocked because they wouldn't have believed that I would have done it. But you know, I am a person, I like to be realistic. I like to say things that are happening. And this is one of the problems we are facing at the moment. The mobile phone, marriages are breaking. People don't know that they need to just pay a little bit of attention. That's it. To who? To those who are closest to you. Your wife, your husband, your children, your parents at times. Put the phone away. Come on. SubhanAllah, be disciplined regarding the phone. So I was saying your link with Allah five times a day. SubhanAllah, people come to the house of Allah and still their phones ring. And nowadays, you know, the music industry has gone worse than the pornography industry. And you know what's happening? The songs are so dirty. Some people have some of those songs as ringtones. One brother, youngster, wanted to know from me where I knew about a certain song I spoke about in one lecture. I said, you won't believe it, from the masjid. He says, what do you mean? I said, someone's phone rang, and I heard the dirtiest words that I, and I got like shock and jolt. And I actually thought to myself, subhanAllah, this person, I wonder, and subhanAllah, the brother, may Allah guide him, I'm sure he must be guided. But he didn't even put his hand in the pocket and switch it off. He let it ring and ring and ring. And, <laughs> And Vicky Minaj had quite a bit of fun. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It's a reality. It's a reality. Watch your ringtones. You're a respectable human being. It'd rather just be the curing curing of a long time ago. SubhanAllah, that's the best. Why? If you're embarrassed one day, at least it won't be an, a, a blasphemous moment, Wallahi. For me, it's blasphemous. To come into the house of Allah, to stand in front of Allah on a Friday, and that's just about the time when you're not even allowed to speak to anyone. And you allow a person to come and sing their songs in front of the poor Imam, Allahu Akbar. Worse than that, in front of Allah. And the children out there, and people like me who don't even know these words, stop for Allah, they're stuck in our heads now. May Allah help us erase it. But to be honest with you, it doesn't mean we thought anything of it. But the good thing is, I've got to learn what the world is all about. SubhanAllah. I got to learn what the, what people are into, the good thing. Do you know what I did? I made an announcement after Salah. I just got up and I said, my brothers and sisters, someone's mobile phone rang in Salah. Please don't turn around to look and don't embarrass the person. They've already been embarrassed by the deed itself and I'm 100% sure they will never do it again. So please, now let's not talk about it, let's walk away. Guess what? I didn't go according to my own advice because I'm speaking about it here and now. What I meant is, don't embarrass the man, he's already embarrassed. It's over. He, he, his lesson, he's, he's already learned it. It won't happen again, not with him, but it may happen with someone else. We learned that lesson. My brothers and sisters, why did I say it? Because that guy, whoever he was, at least he came to the masjid. That's the point. That's the point. At least he came to the masjid. If we treated him badly that day, he might tell himself, listen, I'm never going to go back there because I made a mistake, something happened that these guys, they literally spat in my face. They insulted me, they degraded me. That's what he will think. But Alhamdulillah, he came in. We, I once had a youngster who walked into the masjid and he had a t-shirt which was inappropriate and people started telling him things, you can't come in. And I went and I called him and you know, patted him on the back, brought him to the front. I took out my little cloak and I put it on him. I said, you use this for salah today. <sighs> what an honor. SubhanAllah. Like I said, you know, you get wise cracks who will then come again with that type of a t-shirt only to have your little cloak. <laughs> SubhanAllah. But we can pick them up sometimes. However, this was a genuine case. 
And he felt, and then I told him, I said, brother, you know what, mashallah, from all the clothing you have, here we're standing in front of Allah. This was later on. I said, don't worry what people say. This between you and Allah. Wear a plain shirt when you come in, so that it's not as bad as this. And that had images, you know, bad ones. But my brothers and sisters, the point I'm raising, when your link with the house of Allah is solid, your concern will be, how do I get the people into the masjid? in a nice way. And those who have come here, they are the guests of Ar-Rahman. They are the guests of Allah. This house doesn't belong to me or to you. It belongs to Allah. We are guests. That's what I told you at the beginning. Didn't I say that? I am a guest. Wallahi, you're a guest. Sometimes when we visit the Holy Lands, you know what they say? You are the guests of Ar-Rahman. Don't they say that? Duyufu Ar-Rahman. The guest of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one day when I went for Hajj a long time ago, I asked someone to help me. And I told him, you know, come on, we're your guest. He said, no, 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 you're not my guest, you're the guest of Allah. I said, okay, Allah will help at least. My brothers and sisters, the guests of Allah are more important than the guests who come to you in your house. You would not insult a person who's come to your house as a guest invited by you. <laughs> you hear that so many times, right? That's an invitation from Allah telling you, come. Come for success. Anyone who thereafter comes for the success, they are invited by Allah directly, personally. You cannot treat them in a bad way. They are the guests of Allah. Just like if you were to invite someone else to your house, how would you treat them, subhanAllah? You would offer them, you would be hospitable, you would want them to leave in a way that they feel they want to come back to you, they would like to say good things about you. The same applies to the house of Allah. This is why treat people with respect. Allah says, all of you, as much as you are guests, you are also custodians. Custodians in what way? You are to ensure that the house of Allah is clean, it is maintained, it is looked after. Because of your link with that Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's wrong for me to, you know, to put my litter across the masjid or to litter up the place outside for example. No, this is the house of Allah. I must throw it in the bin. I must be respectful. Those who come, smile at them. Don't just look at the worst thing there. Don't just look at the worst thing that's on them and pick on that. If you want, you can pick on anything. You know, I remember once we had a question from one masjid. They asked us, this Imam, we, we have to fire him, we have to boot him out, we have to kick him out. And we found a big fault with him. What's his fault? When he enters the masjid, he enters with his left foot. So the Shaykh was responding. We were in a group, but the senior scholar who was there, he actually replied in a sarcastic way. And he says, keep him and double his salary. <laughs> Guess why? If you really wanted to fire him and you're telling us that he entered with the left foot, it means he's such a brilliant Imam, you found no other fault with him. Man. Subhanallah, he must be the dude, man. He must be the guy, subhanallah. Entering with the left foot, it's not the sunnah. I don't think he would have done it purposely. I don't think he would have ever told anyone to say, listen people, the sunnah is right, we're going to enter with the left. No Muslim would do that, ever. So you, they're just picking on him. Why? They want him out. We pick on people here. You see that uncle? Hey, that fat uncle. What fat uncle? Okay, the uncles might allow you to call him fatty, but I don't know a woman will allow you to call her fatty. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah, no matter what the weight is of a woman, subhanAllah, you don't joke about it. You don't make a joke about it ever. It is something that is extremely sensitive. It's a topic that I'm cutting here and now. not talking about it again. Okay. So my brothers and sisters, remember that how you make people feel in the house of Allah is extremely important. Now I want to say something else. If you have contributed towards a masjid and people come to fulfill salah in that masjid, you are getting a reward for everyone who fulfills salah in that masjid while you are sitting, subhanAllah. Remember that, that's the gift of Allah. So wouldn't you like to contribute? You know, these tins that move around on a Friday, mashallah. Today there was a tin, I was in some masjid very far away, very far away from here. We actually drove from Yorkshire all the way here, we went back just now. But to be honest, the tin was being moved around salah just before Jum'ah, just before Jum'ah. And, you know, as it came to me, I, 
What do you expect from me besides the good dua? Oh Allah, help this masjid. <laughs> oh Allah, all these guys, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put it in the house, put for the still. But I had to just take it and push it to the next brother on the side. And I remember the joke that was said. I don't know if it's true or if it was a joke. You know, they say there was a guy who was in the masjid. And when the still came around, he was, he put his hand deep in his pocket and he, you know, digging in his pocket and he, he took out a, a, a 50p coin and he put it into the into the tin and as he put it into the tin and the tin started moving towards the right you know, in, the, in the direction it moves the brother from the back tapped him and gave him a 50 pound note so he thought to himself wow beautiful man this guy is so generous he doesn't want to be known listen he doesn't want to be known, mashallah. So he's giving it to me to put in. So immediately, he went to the tin and he put that 50 pound note inside. And then the brother said, brother, it fell out of your pocket. <laughs> fell out. And he said, what? <laughs> he planned to give 50 people. And he ended up putting 50 pounds. Allah <laughs> Akbar. And only after he dumped it into the tin, he was told, you know what? Out of your pocket. Allah, Allah. Imagine how he must have felt. And the brother at the black at the back, I wouldn't be surprised if he intentionally waited, held back the information until the note was gone. So now, you know, people today can do anything. My brothers and sisters, this is why we say, okay, I'm not saying it was right or wrong, but it just goes to show, doesn't it? These things that go around, if you have put a little bit of money in there and say for example they paid the electricity bill, someone used the light to read Quran in the morning at the time of Fajr, you got a reward for that. Why? You helped towards the bill. Someone for example made wudu and they came in. The hadith speaks about how the sins are forgiven with the droplets of water that go down when you make wudu and you had paid for the water that they made wudu with because when we walk in, it's not like the train station that I saw. Where was I? One of the big train stations here in London. You want to go to the loo, you've got to put 30 pence and then it opens like a turnstile. And then you walk in, I'm like, hey guy, 30 p. And when, you went, when I went in, it wasn't like it was a five star place or green or anything, you know? 30 p, you pay. And I thought to myself, if they had to have turnstiles in the masjid, a lot of the people wouldn't even bother coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We don't need the turnstiles in the masjid. What we do need, is people to contribute, who can feel and think to themselves, you know what, Allah has given me a hundred pounds, let me give one pound, one, two pounds, let me put it with the right intention, no one needs to see it. Put it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you. This is why I say the point that I, I wanted to raise was, if you help someone to do a good deed, you get a full reward of that good deed. You must have heard that hadith so many times, man sallana sunnatan hasanatan, falahu ajruha, wa ajru man amila biha. So many times, you know, the person who sets a good example, and even a person who has instructed others to do good or help them in any way, they get a full reward for all of it. So imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used you to contribute in a certain way to a masjid, People came here, they cried, they made tawbah, programs were held, lessons were held. People learned the Arabic language, they learned Quran, they learned goodness. And guess what? You just came in and contributed and you walked away. On the day of judgment, you'll notice a huge pile of good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those whom those deeds are taken away from. You might ask, how can they be taken away? They can be taken away when you slander people, when you backbite, when you gossip, when you commit sin against someone. A lot of what we do today is gossip, slander, backbiting, creating tales. You know what helps us to commit those sins? The same mobile phone. Before the mobile phone, when I was a little bit younger, we didn't have mobile phones. I'm talking of pre-1995. The bulk of us didn't even know what it was all about. If someone told us we're going to have a mobile phone, we used to know the cordless. That was the best you could get. And you know, those who had a few hundred meters with the cordless, wow, that was a proper cordless, you know. If people had to tell you you're going to have a, a phone where you can walk around the whole world and you don't have to actually have a wire connected, you would have just said, no way, keep dreaming, keep dreaming, you know. But at that time, it was a little bit more difficult to accumulate sin through gossip and backbiting. Why? Because it was expensive to call landlines. Nowadays, they say 59 minutes free. I don't know. Here in this country, they give you unlimited calls. Am I right? Landline to landline, almost unlimited in most cases. Use it for a good reason. Use it for a good reason. 
Subhanallah, I remember one young man back in South Africa calling people, waking them up for salat and fajr, and they would have to disconnect their phones, you know. <laughs> Subhanallah. But I'm not saying irritate the guys. All I am saying is, today, we forward a WhatsApp message that was forwarded to us without verifying, clarifying, and even if it was true, hurtful or insulting to some Muslim, that's already backbiting, that's already riba, and guess what? Once you press send, the damage is done. Once you, pre oh mind you, if you're in Zimbabwe, it's not done, not always, because sometimes there's no network, so it actually gives you the option of reloading, reloading, and you've got to think to yourself, okay, okay. I have deleted some decent messages sometimes because I feel that maybe Allah doesn't want me to send this message to this person. Um, let me just we'll reword it or let me say something slightly differently. Things like those because the message wasn't sent. But with us, sometimes a simple thing and you send it and Allah blocked it. And you clicking send again and Allah blocked it. Like now we were coming on the, on, on, on the highway and some parts of the highway, you know the network goes up and down, subhanAllah. And so you, you're trying to send a voice message and it's just not loading. And you're wondering, then you can think to yourself, let me reword it. Maybe I don't need to send this message. Let me send it with better wording, whatever else. So the damage is done. When it's done, it multiplies. It goes from person to person. Before you know it, it's out with a million people. And who did the damage? You. And even if you were just a part of the chain, you get a sin. Meaning you are earning a sin. This is why we say all oh, those good deeds, don't spoil them. Have a concern for one another. Let's promise that we're going to say good things about each other. Let's promise that we will say good things about each other instead of saying bad things. Everyone you talk bad about, there are some good things they've done. And those who have done bad to you, you have the right to highlight that. But at the same time, it would be better if you made a dua for them, you supplicated for them. I was supposed to talk for 45 minutes. We've already spoken for 56 minutes. Do you know why? It's a bonus for those who are outside, inshallah. Those 13 minutes, 6 seconds we lost, they're still in my mind. So my brothers and sisters, that is my message today. Develop your link with Allah, develop your link with the rest of the creatures that Allah has created. And make sure you know. You know, many of us, when we sin, we like to do so in private. Firstly, don't sin. Secondly, if you have sinned in private, you, there is still hope for you. Don't sin openly. Openly, you're encouraging other people and you don't know where it's going to end. But I tell you, if you have sins that you would commit in private, why don't you do good deeds as well that are a secret between you and Allah? Only He knows and only you know. And perhaps the angels who are taking a record. When you get on the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're facing judgment now and there will be sins that you did in secret, you know Allah knows we have a secret between us that's also quite good, alhamdulillah. Do you get the point? So when I used to do good deeds and nobody knew and I didn't ever feel the need to let anyone know, subhanAllah, and I got a beautiful secret, it brings about contentment, happiness. It brings about a lot of contentment. My brothers and sisters, I pray that we can make the world a better place. And I pray at the same time that we can all reach out to one another. We can pray for one another. We can assist in every good cause. And we should never be the source of someone else's agony or someone else's difficulty. We should try to create ease. The hadith says, whoever creates ease for another, Allah will create ease for them in this world as well as the next. May Allah bless you all. May Allah grant you Jannah. Please forgive me for shortcomings on my, on my part and forgive the organizers for shortcomings on their part. And all you brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you, to take you back home safely, having inshallah gained something for the sake of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka'ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.